live from Houston, Texas, it's The Cube, covering Grace Hopper's celebration of women in computing. Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of the Grace Hopper Conference in Houston, Texas. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight. We are joined today with Susie Armstrong, Qualcomm's Senior Vice President of Engineering. Thanks so much for joining us, Susie. Thank you. So, start by telling me a little bit about yourself. How did you get into engineering? Um, I got into engineering, I was always good at math and science as a kid, and I took my first programming class in college. Didn't have programming in high school. <laughs> and. Uh, uh, it was like a puzzle. And then later I learned that uh, with a degree in computer science, I could probably make a living as well. So I went to Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, got a bachelor's in science in uh, computer, bachelor's of science in computer science. And did you have any supportive people along the way? I mean, so much about what we hear about women entering these fields, because I'm sure you were sort of a lone soldier at that time, not many women in your computer science classes. It wasn't really common, although there was Probably 25% of my my computer science classes in the 80s were women, okay. which is actually pretty interesting. And I had very supportive uh, parents, and uh, I had very supportive uh, instructors and and uh, professors as well. At Qualcomm, you are famous for having <laughs> for for creating the first mobile internet code. So we have you to thank the fact that we can pull up our these little gadgets in our pockets. My my husband says that's making zombies. <laughs> <laughs> kind of true. I'm, I, so so talk about your career at Qualcomm and and, and okay. what you've done. Um, so Qualcomm uh, in those days in the 90s is um, was working on CDMA. Qualcomm created the first mobile, um, you know, the, the first real mobile, commercially viable mobile uh, voice system. And so at the time, I had some very supportive management, and they said, what if we use that voice link and we tried to send data over it? And so I created something called Simple Packet Data, and in 19, in three months, um, we got it running, and in 1997, at one of the big uh, CTIA shows, in March, we surfed the net on a little display about an inch square, <laughs> and uh, it really took off from there. Wow, wow. One of your passions um, is getting more women into this industry. Can you talk a little bit about some of the programs and initiatives that you have at Qualcomm? Yeah, we have a number of initiatives and, and programs. Um, the one I am particularly passionate about is something called the Thinkabit Lab. And the Thinkabit Lab is a STEM exposure uh, right now we're, we're working with underserved 6th grade, 6th, 7th and 8th grade kids um, and it's a way to connect um, STEM exposure to careers in engineering and technology for kids that may not ever get exposed to that. So give me an example of how that would work. So they come in for the one day class, they come in and they go through what we call the world of work and we show them all the different kinds of um, jobs that we have at Qualcomm, including you know, engineering and mm -hmm. uh, uh, patent attorneys and uh, accountants, and then they go from there, we do some strengths and values um, programs, and then they go from there into the lab and they learn how to program a, an Arduino board, make a servo move, and then they go over to our, our wall of sort of plush toys and tongue depressors and dinosaurs and glitter, and they, they create a little robot, and then they, they present it at the end of the day. And it's proven to be really impactful, not only to those kids, but to their teachers, their administrators, their superintendents. We've expanded that program with partners in the San Diego area um, to seven different partners, and um, I think maybe you, you know, we also expanded it with Virginia Tech in the DC area. Right. So we're really excited about that, and uh, I'm really excited about the work that, um, that the impact that that has on girls. We also run what we call Q camps, which are girls only, two week camps um, in the summer. And we just finished our third year of a three year cohort of girls, sixth, rising sixth graders, seventh graders, eighth graders. And um, we, will, we are working with Berkeley to do a longitudinal study on how that affects their career choices. 
so, so this is a long-term pipeline. If you're working with sixth graders, <laughs> yes. 12 year olds right now, you're not going to be able to hire them for a good, yeah. a good number of years. Um, what about the, the, the women who are maybe pre-MBA or pre-engineering ma master's degrees? How are you making sure that they uh, stay in engineering and, and, and stay in tech? Yeah, well, for one thing, Qualcomm's kind of used to the long timelines. You know, we work on, the, the technologies that we work on tend to, we start, you know, five years, 10 years ahead, yes. like 5G. Long um, horizon. Yes, exactly. So we're kind of used to looking at sixth graders and thinking, oh, maybe you will be uh, fueling <laughs> the technology of the future. Um, we also have two other programs in Qualcomm that um, are employee networks for women only. Um, one in for women development engineering and one that is in our, our uh, IT group. And those have been very impactful um, for both the women that are in them and also the women and the men that are in the management area around them. We have some of those um, ladies here at, uh, at the conference, so it's also form some professional development. And that, you were one, one of, you were recently honored as one of the top companies by the Anita Borg Institute. And, and, and that was one of the points that the Anita Borg Institute made, is that companies have to be deliberate, have to be planful about how they are developing their female talent. And you can't do an ad hoc program, it's got to be something formal. Right. So can you talk about how that program, the, the nuts and bolts of it, and what it is uh, what are the components? I, I don't think there's necessarily any single sort of recipe with the nuts and with the nuts and bolts. Um, we, like all of these companies um, in the industry, we look at uh, women as an economic imperative. We don't want to leave all this talent on the table, so um, we attack it from many different angles, the STEM exposure for younger kids, um, the support of women and uh, the, the hiring of women into technical jobs, and um, trying, to make, uh, trying to make the rest of us understand what kinds of barriers these women face. So, you know, I wish I could give you a recipe. <laughs> I want the secret recipe. sauce. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> right, right. Um, and I, I think it's really important that um, you know, Qualcomm's not the only, obviously, Qualcomm's not the only one doing these kinds of, uh, this kind of work because, uh, you know, 10, 15 years ago, there was nothing like the Great Hopper uh, Conference. There was no real um, consortium of companies who, who uh, helped women with their careers and helped them make these choices. So I think the, the nuts and bolts, if you will, are not only at individual companies, they're also in the whole industry. Speaking of Grace Hopper, you're here. You've been you've been to this conference many times before. What what are your thoughts and impressions of this one? Oh my gosh, it's so <laughs> it's so inspirational to walk into a conference uh, center and see. I came last year as well, twelve thousand, and then I think there's fifteen thousand confident, talented, you know, women here, and plus all these companies who are really interested in not only hiring them but. Um, uh, making sure that uh, that they end up being um, uh, a part of this this society that we are building. So it's um, it's incredibly in inspirational. And then I, uh, with the programs that they have here, very practical, very hands on. This uh, the Anita Borg Institute and the Grace Hopper Conference has um, some of the most um, concrete um, programs that I've ever seen. We're just about out of time, but I want to know who is your STEM hero and why? Ah, that's a really <laughs> tough one because I have a lot of a lot of STEM heroes and frankly, because probably the exposure I had, a lot of them are men. I have had so many men help me in my career and um, and uh, I've learned from so many men, not only my managers, but the people under me, the people around me. So it's really hard to point to one person that is my STEM hero. But I do have to point to my mother. Oh, <laughs> so in the end, it's, it is yeah. a woman. My, my mother can- And was she an engineer? She was not an engineer, but my mother could fix anything. She ah. was, and th I think that really, in all seriousness, that really rubbed off on me if she was, faced with something that was broken, she would take it apart and she would, yeah, she was resourceful and she wasn't afraid of anything. Wow, wow. So thanks to your mom. <laughs> thanks mom. Yeah. Well that concludes our time with Susie Armstrong, the Senior Vice President of Engineering at Qualcomm. Thank you for joining us. This has been theCUBE's live coverage of the Grace Hopper Conference here in Houston, Texas. We'll be back after this break.